Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. Amen. So thankful when we can come together and we can learn the word and we can dive into the word of the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful that we have this opportunity to come together um, in the middle of the week. Um, so I wonder if we can just go over the prayer request. I don't have anything here. But if we can just keep um, Ben, um, Brickman in prayer, Frank, um, Sister Keon, and Eric Treviso. We'll keep those our prayers. Um, keep those names in our prayers. And if you have a need in this place, I wonder if you can just let God know by just lifting up your hands toward him. Big or small, God is able to meet that need. Let's all pray. God, we love you and we thank you. God, you are so perfect. God, you are so worthy and there's nobody like you. God, I just am so grateful that we have the opportunity, Lord Jesus. Lord God, to come and feel your presence, Lord. Lord, in your presence is fullness of joy, Lord God. And Lord, we lift up Ben tonight, God. God, you know, Lord Jesus, the condition he is in, God. You know, Lord God, what he's needing tonight, God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would send your ministering angels, Lord God, to bring healing to him tonight, God. We bring up Frank in our prayers, Lord Jesus. We know, Lord God, that you, Lord Jesus, will come through in that situation. We pray for Sister Keon and Brother Eric tonight, God. Lord G, there's nothing impossible for you, Lord God. All things are possible to you, Lord God, and we have faith in your name, Lord Jesus. And I also, Lord God, lift up every hand lifted up to you, God. Be with each and every one of our needs tonight, Lord Jesus. I pray that you be with the speaker, Lord. Anoint him, Lord. Give him a fresh anointing, Lord God, and have your way, Lord, in praise tabernacle tonight. In Jesus' name, worship with the praise team. Amen. Before we start, why don't we lift up our hands? Why don't we shake off the the weariness of the day. You may feel tired right now, and we're going to sing about freedom. And I believe that once we lift up our voices, once we really begin to clap our hands,
Thank you, Jesus. How many are thankful for the freedom that's in the place today? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may take your seat. We're so glad to be in the house of the Lord once more today. Excited for all that God is doing. Man, Sunday was just such a powerful day. Great lesson by Brother Swint and awesome preaching by Brother Pavela. We are just so grateful for all the anointing that God has given to this church. How many of you appreciate this anointed praise team we have on here today? Amen. Praise God. Right after uh, the next song, Brother Leo Wells is going to come and preach to us or teach to us or maybe a mixture. Uh, he likes me now more than he did before, and it's not fair because I thought he liked me just because I was cool. But my DNA says that I'm 10% African from Congo, and he's like, I knew I liked you more. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> But uh, he's going to come and minister to us. Uh, and when he comes up, the kids, you will all be dismissed to go over uh, to the practice after this last song. When you see Brother Leo Wells come up here, you kids go over there. Can I hear an amen? amen. All right. And then uh, Sunday, April 14th at 6 p.m., our youth and hyphen. Any youth and hyphen in the house? Man. You're not a youth or a hyphen yet, Daniel. In the youth and hyphen, you will be able to attend the youth fellowship. See Brother Martinez or Sister Martinez for more information. June 20th is soon approaching, even though it seems like it's a long ways away. But we have the men's fellowship uh, at, at 10 a.m. on uh, June 20th. And then we also have a youth and hyphen service at 6 p.m. on the same day. So if you need more information about that, you can see Brother Cesena for the men's. And you can see the, uh, the Martinez for the youth and hyphen. If you have not already given your Save Our Children offering, I would encourage you to um, do so and try to get that in as soon as possible because soon our church will be sending out our Save Our Children offering to the district, and we know that it is a very powerful cause, and we just believe that God is going to do great things in children's ministries. Amen? Amen. Right now, we're going to give you an opportunity to give in your tithe and your offering. Our church secretary is in the back if you need assistance to give electronically. Our usher is back there. He'll be waiting on you if you would like to come deposit your tithe and your offering. I'm going to invite you to stand. We're going to pray. Our praise team is going to minister in one more song, and then Brother Wells is going to come and minister to us. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to be in covenant with you. Lord God, I pray that you would bless the gift and the giver. I pray, Lord God, that you would put a hedge of protection upon all the members of this church, Lord God, and that you would protect us and guide us. In Jesus' name, we thank you. God bless you as you give, church.
continue to worship your God. Just such a sweet presence of the Lord that has just entered into this place. I know there's a schedule. I know that there's stuff on the agenda, but let's continue just to tap into that. That's it. Just close your eyes and lift up your hands and just begin to worship him. Begin to love on him right now. For he has been too good to us not to take this moment, not to take this opportunity just to say, Lord, I love you. Lord, you are my everything. desire tonight just to be with the Lord. Oh, we serve a good God, a mighty God. Hallelujah. I 
can't, I can't stress it enough. When, when God is moving, when God is present, just to tap in and to hold on to that. The Lord can do more than I can ever could. He doesn't have to wait to the end of the service, after the message, to, to give exactly what you need. He doesn't work on a schedule. And we have to be obedient enough to say, Lord, when, whenever you move is when I move. I just love what I'm feeling in this place right we can just, just close our eyes and lift up our hands just one more time. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord God. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we give you honor and glory, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this sweet presence right now, Lord God. For your peace, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, corrosa tanario soto. Ya canta no roca tanario soto roco rosa tanario. Oh, my God. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you. If God has been good to you, just put your hands together and just give him a moment of praise. Hallelujah. I do believe I have a, a word from the Lord. I don't know if I'm going to teach, preach. Sing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I believe God wants to do something tonight. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Colossians chapter 1, beginning with verse 9. And as you turn there, I want to take this opportunity to give honor to my pastor, Pastor Blizzard and his wife, Sister Blizzard. That man has walked with me in a, a lot of situations, and I'm very thankful for him. Very thankful for his, his wisdom, his knowledge, and his guidance. And if God wouldn't have placed him in my life, I would not be here before all of you tonight. So I'm very thankful for my pastor and my big brothers in, in Christ as well. Uh, we have such a good leadership team, caring, giving. It's, it's awesome to be a part of this amazing team. I also want to give honor to my wife who cannot be here. She's still not feeling the best. But I want to say thank you for those who have been praying for her, dropping off some supplies. Uh, we appreciate it. it. It is not going unnoticed. And, and I believe you will definitely be blessed for it. So thank you. Uh, but definitely want to give her honor uh, for allowing me to be here, you know. Uh, I guess, uh, sharing me. <laughs> so I'm thankful for that. But if you have in your Bible Colossians 1, cha uh, chapter 1, verse 9, it reads, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And quickly, if you can go to chapter 2, verse 6. And it reads, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Walk ye in him. So the title uh, that I have given this 
teaching, message, preaching, whatever you want to call it, is walking in God. Walking in God. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we love you and we thank you, Lord God. I ask right now that I decrease and you increase in this place, Lord Jesus, that you open up our, our ears and our minds and our heart to, to understand what it is that you would like to speak to your church tonight, Lord God, that it will take root in our lives, Lord Jesus, for it is our desire to not leave the same way that we came in, Lord Jesus, and that you will take your liberty, Lord God, as you have already started to move on your people, Lord. We ask that you continue to just be with us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You all may be seated. Glory unto his name. Walking in God. By a quick show of hands, how many of you guys enjoy walking? Okay, I was about to say nobody. Okay, I got, I got a good number of people. Enjoy walking. What is it about walking that you maybe enjoy? Is it because it's, you know, easy, it's free, maybe? <laughs> you know, you don't have to pay for a gym membership. It's refreshing, I like it. I like it, refreshing, but walking. I remember as a, a, a young man, I didn't really, I wasn't really too fond of walking. And I wasn't fond of walking because it didn't get me to my desired results fast enough. If I wanted to lose weight, walking was the, the last thing that was on my mind. I wanted to get there quickly. So I wanted to run. I wanted to, to lift super heavy weights. I, I wanted to do everything but walk in order to meet my goal. When it came to, to walking, it, it just didn't quite cut it. We don't really tend to think of walking as a form of being fit. It's unacceptable because it does not give us those desired results quick enough. We want to we wanna hurry it up. We want to we wanna get there fast. But one thing as I, I do get a little older, I always tell people I'm older than I look, is that I'm beginning to enjoy walking more and more. It's less painful on my knees. It's less painful on my joints, and it, it, is, it is starting to become refreshing. I'm beginning to enjoy it where I can, I can walk and I can begin to, to meditate and I can begin to think on the good things of God. Sometimes in our, in our walk with God, it's important to slow down and to actually walk with him. When the Lord is... Is, is walking at a, at a particular, particular pace and he is waiting on us as we are, are growing and as we are learning in God. There are many notable characters in the, the Bible who walked with God. We need to walk with him, not ahead of him, and even oftentimes not behind him, but with him. Enoch walked with God. Noah walked with God. So many people walked with God. David, Abraham, we can go on and on that they walked with God. And there was a particular process that you see with every single one of these characters. Abraham had his faults. David had his faults. But they continued to walk with him. We are in a race that is set before us. In Hebrews 12, 1, it says, run with patience the race that is set before us. How can you run with patience? I'm like, is that, a, is that an oxymoron? Is that, is that, is that what, what is that? What is going on? But when you think of a, a, a race, there may not always be running involved. There's walking uh, uh, speed walking and all these other different things as I was, as I was trying to research this particular subject that God has, has placed on, on me, walking, running with patience. So we are not in a race, especially when you are living this life, we are not in a race of the swift, but it's the ones who can endure with patience that win. Amen. 
We will never get to a place where, with God where it's like, oh, we won, we got it, until we, we see those pearly gates, as some people will say. But what's interesting, as I was researching, it says the longest someone ever ran was 350 miles without stopping in 80 hours. Whew, that's a long way. 350 miles, 80 hours, not stopping while running. So I'm like, okay, well, what, what about walking? A little less exciting when you, when you think about it, where the record... Uh, holding for walking is 142 miles in 24 hours. So then I got to mathing. My math was mathing. And, and I'm just like, hmm, well, what if they had the same time? And it comes to find out that if they had the exact same time at that exact same pace, roughly 472 miles that you will accomplish when walking if given the same time. So you're able to go a lot further when you're walking. So sometimes we need to slow down and, and walk with God to get further with God. Because it's about where we are trying to get to and but not how fast we're trying to get there. We need to slow down and walk with God. Wherever you're at with God, as long as you are with him and you're progressing, you are right where you need to be. As long as you're walking. Sometimes we do want to want to look at those who who've been in this life a lot longer and say, well, this is where they're at. Trust me, being transparent, when I first got into ministry, I'm looking at my pastor like, man, he's amazing, man. He's so wise. Man, look at him go. So I got in a hurry. I'm trying to run. I'm trying to catch up to where he's at. Not realizing he's been walking this life a whole lot longer than me. Sometimes we need to have that self-reflection and say, okay, Lord, you have me where I'm at for a reason. I'm walking and I'm growing. And that's exactly right where I need to be. So I had to, to, to sit back and enjoy where I'm at, even in struggle. Because I begin to realize as I walk and slow down and being able to see the scenery because I'm not running that, even in my struggle, how God's unfailing love still shines through. Even in time... In provision, sometimes we get so excited like, yes, Lord, thank you for providing and, and not really dwelling in it. But we need to, to sit back and really think, wow, God, you are so good because we are in the season of plenty. You didn't have to do it, but you did it anyway. Enjoying this time and, and, and if you are in peace, how God can give you that comfort and that peace that only he can give. Sometimes we take it for granted because we're such in a rush to get to that next thing. We want to begin running instead of walking. So I want to, I want to go really deep here. And I want to go into this, this, this story that will touch many of our hearts. I'm pretty sure many of you heard of it. Called the tortoise and the hare. Yeah? <laughs> okay. How many, if I quit your hair, how many of you guys have heard the story of the tortoise in here? Okay, good. Good, good majority of you. But in that story, it tells the story of a race between a tortoise and a hare. A creature that moved very slowly. And a hare that could, woo, zip right past them. The hare was very confident. Because I'm like, man, I can win this. That tortoise moves so slow, he, he, he has nothing on me. But the tortoise ran, I mean, the hare ran so fast and was so far ahead that he got distracted. He got lackadaisical. And he was like, you know what? Eh, I got time to sleep. It's funny, but oftentimes it's, 
I wonder how many times have I ran so fast ahead of God that I fell asleep spiritually. Because I was so confident and I was like, oh, I got this. I'm moving way ahead to where I, I begin to get distracted. Because, oh, I'm moving so fast. But I'm happy with the, the moral of the story because those who know it, the, the tortoise win. Because he was consistent. He was, he was steady. And he was progressing. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we think, oh, we're progressing too slowly. But as long as you're growing, that's what matters. We all have a place that we want to get to, a reward. And it doesn't matter if that person gets theirs first, as long as we all get there. That beautiful place of, of heaven, we, we want to see everyone there. God wants to see everyone there, that not one would perish. But so many people want to run this race where they get burnt out. But the tortoise had one objective in his mind, that is to finish the race. He stayed focused. God is calling us to finish this race. But he doesn't want us moving so fast that we get distracted and we begin to fall asleep. Slow and steady wins the race. And sometimes, and a lot of times, slow and steady wins the race, when, especially when it comes to the things of God. Want to make it to the end. Walking in God. By definition, in this scripture, to walk means to make one way or to progress. In Hebrew, it means to, to live, to, to regulate, or how you conduct yourself. So, many of you are probably asking, Brother Leo, how do I, how do I walk with God? How do I do it? And I mean, there was so many scriptures when, I, when, when God placed this on me. There are so many scriptures, over 250 scriptures dealing with this subject. So I want to kind of help narrow it down because I didn't want it to turn into like a 30-part series. So I know how many of you guys were sitting for something like that. 30-part series, yeah? Okay, I got one smile over there. Okay, I got a hand raised over there. Awesome. It's okay. I know we have in church, but it's okay to, to have a little fun. But I want to give you seven walks uh, that are in the book of Ephesians. And if you are a note taker like myself, if you want to write this down, because I may not go over all seven, I want to be respectful of time and I want to, God to move especially. But seven, seven walks in Ephesians. The first one is, and this is, in it, it, it is not in any particular order. The first one is walk worthy of our calling. And you can find that in Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. The second one is walk not as the world walks. Ephesians 4, 17. Number three is walk in love. Ephesians 5, verses 1 through 2. The fourth one is walk as the children of light. In Ephesians 5, verses uh, 8 through 10. The fifth one is walk circumspectly. In Ephesians 5, Verses 15 through 17. Number six is remember how we used to walk according to this world. Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 3. And then number seven, the last one, is walk in good works. Ephesians 2 and 10. And the first one that I want to deal with tonight is walking circumspectly. What is that? So let's read that uh, really briefly in Ephesians 5, verses 15. Through 17, it says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Being wise, understanding, walking circumspectly. And within that, the meaning of that word in the Greek is exactly or accurately, step for step, being aligned with God and walking exactly with him. 
and accurately. See, oftentimes, and if, Sam Troy, if I can borrow you for a second, come on up here. Give him a round of applause, guys. Yeah. Sharp young man. He even, he even dressed like me tonight. He knew I was going to pick on him. But walking a, exactly and in, in accurately. See, oftentimes when we, when we first get into this, uh, this life, when God first fills us with the, the, the Holy Ghost, we, 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 or even before exactly, we have this thought in our mind of, I can't do it. It's going to be too hard because this is what we think God is going to do. The second that we commit, just run to the other side. Just run. No, Lord, get back here. He's going so fast. Oh, Lord. That's what we begin to think, that the Lord is just going to take off. And there is no possible way that we can ever catch up to him. I can't, I can't live holy. I, I, can't, I can't cut this addiction. I can't, I can't do the things that I, 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 you want me to do, Lord. That's too far ahead. You're moving too fast, Lord. I can't do it. It's too hard. When actuality, this is what God is doing. Come back, come back, come back. Where he's taking us by the arm, and I'll switch with you. Where he's taking us by the arm, and he's, and he's walking with us. And we're like... Okay, I, I, I got this, Lord. I can do this, Lord. And we, and we begin to, to get encouraged. And we begin to, to, to really believe in ourselves. And we believe that, okay, Lord, as long as I'm walking with you, you will give me the encouragement, that you will give me the strength, that you will give me the provision, that you will give me the peace that is needed to continue down this road that you have set me on, Lord God. Okay, I'm going to continue to just walk with you. I'm going to continue to believe in you, Lord God. I'm going to continue to trust in you, Lord Jesus, because I know that you are, are, are walking with me, Lord God. And we begin to walk with him for some time. But then we begin to get distracted. We begin to, to, to look ahead. Oh, oh, is, is that a new job? Oh, thank you, Lord. I've been praying for this. Oh, 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 a new house? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, Lord, thank you. I've been praying so much for this. And we're beginning running. Oh, Lord, oh, so many good things are happening, Lord. Oh, I'm so excited about what you're doing. And, and we begin to... To, to run out of breath, we, be, we begin to get weary. We begin to get tired. And, and then once we're tired and once we're weary, that's when we begin to, to look up and, and realize that God is nowhere around us. That, that God, where, 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 where are you? I thought we, I thought all these good things that were coming my way, Lord Jesus, I, I, I surely thought that this was the direction that you wanted me to go in. Meantime, God is still walking. Continue to walk. But see, when we begin to, to look ahead, that's when distraction happens and God may be walking that way and you begin running this way. And it's unfortunate that the moment that we realize that we are in the spiritual state that we're in is after we're tired, after we're weary. Then that's when we begin to question, Lord, what is going on? What is happening? You ran ahead. You ran ahead. You weren't walking with him. Come back, come back. And likewise, good job, good hustle, good hustle. <laughs> likewise, as as we're, we're walking with God and we're, we're believing and, and, and we're trusting in God and we're walking and we're living this life. And once again, we, we look ahead and, and, and keep walking, keep walking. And, oh, Lord, are, are you sure that direction? You don't, you don't want to head this way? You sure? Because, I mean, the, 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 the new job and the new car and everything is, is that way, Lord. You, you sure you want to go that way? You, you sure I need to go through that struggle? You sure I got to go through that valley? Uh, uh, are you sure? Keep on walking. And we just allow God to, to walk ahead and, and we become stagnant. We just 
stay still because, Lord, I, I, I don't know if I want to walk with you in, in that direction. So there's two things that happen. We can run ahead or we can just completely stop in our tracks. And sometimes the enemy wants to confuse you with, oh, I'm just, I'm just being still until the, the Lord tells me something. I'm just being still. I'm, I'm waiting on, on the Lord until he renews my strength. But oftentimes the, when, you're, when, you're, when you're waiting in the meantime, until God performs, you're supposed to be serving. You're still supposed to be moving. You're still supposed to be working. Amen? Especially within this kingdom. Because when you're, when you're waiting, and I want to put it as far as like a restaurant, when you sit at a table, who comes up to you to take your order? A waiter. Someone who is waiting on you. So it doesn't mean to just become stagnant and stop what you're doing. It doesn't mean to become stagnant and just like, okay, you know what? Uh, I know he's walking in that direction. I know he wants me uh, to go deeper within him and, and, and go through this because I know he's equipping me for something. But I don't know. Thank you, Sandra. Appreciate it. Oftentimes we do that not realizing that the Lord will continue to give whatever you need as long as you continue to walk with them, walk circumspectly with them, walk accurately with them, exactly with them, step for step for step for step. And that's what Paul is telling them that they need to do, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Amen. Because the enemy loves to just to dangle that little carrot that you will just go, pew, take off running. And it's not until you get tired where you realize, man, man, Lord, where are you? I need you. And then you stop thinking like, okay, well, I'm going to stop until God goes in the direction that I want to go. Then we stop seeking his will. We stop seeking his purpose for our lives when he's walking with us. Though I walk through the valley, right, thou art with me. He's with you, but you have to walk. You have to, 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 to keep your eyes on Jesus. Because in, in both of those situations, come back up here one more time. Thank you, brother. Because within both of those situations, when you're, when you're walking with God, you're looking ahead. You're looking ahead. You're looking to see, okay, is this where we're possibly going? Oh. What's, what's down that road? When walking circumspectly with God accurately, exactly, you're supposed to be looking at him. Just walk. Okay, Lord, I don't know where we're going, but I see you. I'm seeking you first. I'm seeking everything that you have for me, Lord. Oh, that is awesome, Lord God. I don't see those steps coming, but I am trusting in you, Lord. Keeping your eyes on God. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Got to seek him first. But what the one thing is, though, what is pleasing to God? Faith, right? Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. See, when you keep your eyes on Jesus and not looking ahead or worrying about even where we're going, you're walking by faith. You're walking saying, you know what, I don't even need to look down the road because I'm looking at you, God, and I'm trusting in you. I am believing in you by faith. That's why we are to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. So if we are walking by faith, then we are walking circumspectly or accurately. That's how you walk circumspectly. That's how you walk exactly with God is by looking at him and just having faith in him and saying, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to take my eyes off of you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Isn't God so good? Isn't God so good? That even in times where I feel like I'm walking really slowly, and I feel like I'm, I'm not doing enough. God is right there with me still saying, you know what? I'm with you. I got you. I got you because I love you and I care for you. Amen. Is this helping anyone? 
Praise God. Praise God. Walking in faith. So it doesn't matter if you're taking long strides, if you're taking short ones, wherever you are at right now. As long as you have your eyes and your attention and your focus on Jesus, you are walking with him. As long as you have your faith and your belief in him saying, you know what, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen next, but I know that you are in control. You are walking with him. Do not become distracted because you think others may be running past you by, running circles around you. Slow and steady wins the race because he wants us to be wise. He doesn't want us to be confused with rushing into everything you think is from God. Because that will get us in trouble. Well, we think, I think this is from God. So, yeah, pew, you rush. Instead of walking, saying, okay, Lord, my eyes are on you. My eyes are on you. I'm focused on you in my prayer closet. All right, I'm focused on you. I'm fasting. Okay, Lord, I'm focused on you. Let me go ask my pastor. I'm focused on you, Lord Jesus, because I don't want to move ahead. I want to walk circumspectly with you. Amen. To take full advantage of every opportunity. Do not rush in. Walk exactly. Walk accurately. Move at the speed of obedience. Move at the speed of obedience. That could be really, really slow sometimes. I mean, like, really slow, like, just really, really slow. And that's okay. That's okay as long as you are walking with him. Move at the speed of obedience. Amen. The next one that I, I want to go into, and time is going by really fast already, is to walk worthy of our calling. Walk worthy of our calling. And let's read that in Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 3. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Walk worthy of our calling. Many times when you hear that, 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 that word calling, it's associated with what you're, you're doing in ministry. Preaching, teaching, Sunday school director, youth pastor. What am I doing in ministry? What is my calling in ministry? And that word worthy you know, it means, you know, to do it good, do it appropriately, do it well. So we think we can't walk worthy of our, our calling if we are not in a specific ministry. When that's not what Paul is saying right here. He's not saying, oh, you can only walk worthy of your, your calling if you're a preacher, teacher, evangelist, or any of those other things. But Paul is telling them not to walk in that type of calling, but... Uh, that it's a calling that we're all meant to walk in. And that is to be humble and gentle and be patient with each other, making an allowance for each other's faults because of your love. That is the calling that we are all called to, that Paul is sitting here talking about. In this place, not that, oh, when, if you're a preacher that you're going to be the, the best preacher on earth. Or if that you're a teacher that you're going to be the best teacher on earth. But that we are all called to treat each other appropriately, worthy, by being humble, by being gentle, by being patient, and making allowances for each other's fault. There's nothing more, more, more humbling than saying, like, okay, I, I, I really want to speed this walk up. Can you, can, can, can you hurry up? I, I, need you, I, need you, I need you to hurry up a little bit because, you know, I'm trying, to, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get here and you're back there. And, you know, that's really, that's really putting a weight on me. 
and I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think this is going to really work out. I know that you're my brother in Christ. I know that you're my sister in Christ. But, yeah, see, I, I, I'm trying to get here. And you're just moving a little bit too slow for me. Oh, 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 I know that you've only been saved a, a, a month. And I've been saved a, 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 a couple years now. So we're really not on the same level. So I, I don't think I can humble myself enough to say, you know what, sis or bro, I, I know that you're struggling right now. So I got you. I'll walk with you. I'll help you out. I'll give you a call and I will encourage you. I'll give you a call and say, you know what, brother and sister, I am praying for you. You know what, brother and sister, God loves you. And I am so happy that you have found God and that you attend this church and that you are a part of the body. To be humble and to be patient and, and gentle with one another. That's how we walk worthy of our calling. Making an allowance for each other's fault. Dwelling in unity. There's nothing more precious than that. And I am so thankful. I am so thankful that every time I go through a struggle, every time that things begin to get hard, that God has placed me here in a church that is so loving, that is so caring, that will say, you know what, bro, I'm thinking about you. I know that things are hard right now, but bro, we love you, and we know that you can do this. We know that you got this. Unity. Unity within the body. Oftentimes, I think about what Brother Hernandez said, where he, he said that sometimes we, we visit unity, but we don't dwell in it. And when that, when that thought came to my mind, a, a, a vision of a race popped in where everyone is in the, in the starting blocks. And, and as the, the gun goes off, everyone starts running. And if you look at a race in the beginning, everyone is kind of together. And as time goes on, that's when you begin to see the, the separation of who's coming in first, who's coming in second, and who's coming in, in third. And, and, and that's what he, I believe he meant that we visit it, that we have moments of unity, but he wants us to dwell in it and walk with one another as brothers and sisters, helping one another in our times of struggle and need to dwell in it. But we have to walk worthy of our calling in order to dwell in unity. And if we walk in these things, humility, patience, gentleness, then we are walking in God. Because that's how the world's going to know that we are his disciples, how we love one another. But we have to walk worthy of our calling. That's why humility is so important. That's why it's so essential, saying that, you know what, I'm, I'm not just worried a, about me and, and where I'm at. That you say, you know what, I don't care if I've been in this 30 years and you've been in it 30 days. I got you. I'm with you. And I'm here to help. Hallelujah, Jesus. So important, so important. Where we can just slow down enough to walk in and, and really see, okay, how is my brother doing? How is my, my sister doing? Where I know many of us have duties and responsibilities in the church, and, and I'm guilty of it, uh, of it as anyone else, where I, I get in and I'm like, okay, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this, I got to do that. And I'm such in a, in a, in a rush to, to get the things that I need to get accomplished uh, for church that I may walk by and, and God checks my spirit and be like, go check on Brother Adam. And I'm like, no, 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 I got to get this done. I got to get this accomplished. I got to get this finished. Go check on Brother Adam. No, 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 Lord, no, no, not right now, not right now, not right now. Go check on Brother Adam. Adam, I need you to sit with him. I need you to give him a hug and say, Jesus loves you. But we will miss it if we're not walking, if we're not slowing down. And I got so much. 
And I'll, I'll make this the last one. Remembering how we used to walk. Remembering how we used to walk. Yeah, I'll just, I'll go with this last one. In Ephesians 2, verse 1, and let's read all the way to verse 7. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we, had, we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, even as others. But God, someone say, but God, who is rich in mercy, For his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. We're in time past, meaning once before, how we all walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, disobedient, reckless, not really checking for God. We have to remember in times past how we, we, we used to be, how I used to be addicted to substances, how I, I, I used to not care about other people's feelings, how I, I, I used to do these things because it's a, a reminder every single time of how rich God's mercy and his love is within my life. That's what helps me be from becoming this self-righteous person like I never had faults. By remembering how I, I, I used to be. That what helps me when it comes to witnessing to a person who, who, who may smell like weed, who may smell like alcohol. That what helps me because I used to be right where they were at. I used to walk exactly where they were at. And we have to remember those things because there is a hurting world that is out there. There is a world that is dying. There is relatives that are dying who do not know God. But yet, if we don't remember where we once came from and remember how rich his mercy is and how rich his love is, we will become self-righteous and be like, well, I got it. I know where, I know where I'm walking. I know where I'm walking at. And have no love for them. And have no love for them to go up there and tell them, I was right where you're at. I was right where you're at. I used, I used to smoke too. But God came into my life and he changed all that around. Because people, they want it. They're hungry for it. I can't tell you how many times I got that surprise look at someone who, who, who has tattoos from head to toe and, and smelling like all kind of stuff. And, and I walk up and say, Jesus loves you. What? You're talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Jesus loves you. And then a, and a smile comes in her face and they're saying, thank you. Because they think that no one like us will ever walk up to someone like them and tell them about God. But if we remember where we're at, we can help somebody where they are. Because we used to be where they were at. Remembering in time past how you used to walk. I don't know why I'm getting so emotional. (laughs) If we forget how we used to be, then it affects how we look at others. 
how we look at others. Remember, walking in these things. And I'm, and I'm coming to a close. I'm coming to a close because I believe God wants to move. I know the, I know the word says that we are a, a, a new creature in Christ. And we are. All things are made new. But that doesn't mean our past was not real. And it doesn't mean our past shouldn't motivate us to help someone walk to where we're at. And as we both walk towards Jesus, and as we both walk in God, walking in God. And the musicians may come. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to finish this, but that's okay. Because God, God, like I said at the start, God can do more than I ever could. Your past is to, to help, should help motivate us, not condemn us at all. But we have to remember. There was a tale of, of, of two Sauls in your, in, your, in your Bible, King Saul and Saul who became Paul. Had two very different stories. One started off humble. Oh, I come from the, the smallest tribe of, of Benjamin. Who am I to be king over your people? After he became king, he, he forgot where he came from. It felt like, oh, I don't really need to really obey the Lord. I'll just do a little couple sacrifices and, and, and call it a day. He forgot. And then you have Saul who, who, who became Paul, and he often remembered the things he used to do to God's people, how he used to persecute them, kill them, trying to wipe them out. But if it wasn't for the mercy of God, if it wasn't for the, the love of God, and him remembering, he often goes back and say, I am the least, I am the least of the apostles. He remembered. With this walk, I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're going through. But it's not how you start. Based on these two characters, it's not how you start. But it's how you finish. It's how you finish. You may be walking in the valley right now. But fear no evil because he's with you. He's right there with you, walking with you. Growing takes time. Don't be in a rush. And we can all stand to our feet right now. I'm coming to a close. It's about how you finish. If you are in that place where you feel like, I'm tired. Lord, I don't, I don't know where you at. I don't know how I got here because you ran so far ahead. Come to this if you feel like, Lord, I feel like I just stopped. I just stopped. Because I saw you taking me in a direction that I don't believe I was ready for. You can come to this altar. If you just like, Lord, I want to just get my eyes and my attention and my focus back on you, Lord God, because I want to walk by faith, Lord. Walk by faith. These altars are open. Walking in God. Walking in God. Walking in God. Walking in God. Walking in God.
If you need to be reminded tonight that God still loves you, he does. He still loves you. He still has a plan for your life. You are not too far for him. You are not too far gone for his love. Walk with him. Walk with him. Walk with him. Walk with him. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord God. Oh, we just honor and exalt you, Lord Jesus. Oh, to seek your face, Lord. Is my only desire right here, right now. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Just close your eyes and lift up your hands and just begin to worship God right now. Begin to worship him. Because he's doing something right now. That's it. That's it. It's okay. Yes, that's it. <laughs> 